Me? Let me walk rain. Oh, yes. Lord Nasher Alagandar, Defender of Neverwinter, and Reverend Judge Olaf Uska, Lord Justiceer of Tyr. Bring in the accused. Reverend Judge, let the trial commence. We are gathered here to determine the truth of the crime committed in the small village of Ember. Its people slaughtered to the last man, woman, and child. Under Tyr's guidance shall the truth of this matter be revealed, and justice delivered. Is the accuser here? I speak for those the accused slaughtered at Ember, and I am here to see that justice is carried out this day. And is the accused here, and her defender? We are present and eager to bring the truth of this matter into Tyr's sight, Reverend Judge. Very well. We now list the items presented by the accused in their defense, and they will be shown to the people of the court, Lord Nasher, and held aloft for the eye of Tyr to see. First off... It may take a while for them to get through all the evidence, bless it, and the rest of the ritual nonsense, so if you have anything you want to ask, now's the best time. Torio is an arrogant creature, but she is not a Luscan ambassador for nothing. This court is her theater, her arena, and she has had years of experience in treachery and twisting words. While evidence helps a case, she knows it is often the drama, the belief of everyone here as to who is guilty and who is not that will ultimately win the day. Do not forget that the rabble are here today to see someone hang. Unless you can convince them that you have been wronged, and grievously so, it is an uphill battle you fight. It is somewhat unorthodox, but playing upon the animosity between Luskin and Neverwinter may help you. But that will only go so far and may even help Torio in convincing the court that your actions may have been an attempt to start another war which no one in Neverwinter wants. I cannot give you a clear strategy, but remember that trading diplomatic words with Torio will be difficult. Do not resort to such a duel unless you feel you can absolutely win, and do not threaten her or try to bluff her unless you are equally certain. If you fail, you are bound for the gallows for certain. Well, I'm glad someone does. I occasionally have a good idea, you know. Oh, well, you're welcome. But really, no thanks needed. I assure you, this is a labor of love, and I relish the thought of seeing Luskin lose face, and possibly Torio losing her head. Come, let us deliver some humiliations, one arrow at a time. It looks like they have finished dispensing the evidence. And that is the evidence before us. Ah, that went over well. I think we've done some damage to their case, and put a nice little twist of the dagger in Torio's side. The accuser, Ambassador Torio Claven of Luskin, may now call witnesses to the stand. I think we have seen enough of these objects and speculation. Let us hear from those who witnessed the truth. Speculate? The truth is what we are here to determine. Everything is in question. 
Of course not, and I aim to prove it. I suggest you hold your tongue. I think you will want to hear what my witnesses have to say. My, she has a temper. Well done. I am impressed. I understand that you wish to stall the witnesses about to speak, but there is really nothing more your wordplay can do to prevent it. Another witness, yes, and a most important one, Reverend Judge. Unknown to many, the people of Ember were not slaughtered to the last woman and child. I call on Elaine, the last living resident of Ember, to speak on what she saw that fateful day. Elaine, thank you for coming here. I know how difficult it must be, but you realize that you are the only voice of Ember that survived that terrible tragedy. Now, please tell the court what you saw. I... I saw the accused there at Ember. She killed them all. Elaine. No. Look, when you get the chance, ask her if I would ever travel with someone who would do that, and where we were when it occurred. This isn't good. We need to change the course of the river streaming from her eyes, or we're all going to hang. Perhaps after the witness has a chance to tell her side of the story. I understand you are anxious to derail this key witness, but show some compassion for her. It will be allowed. In time, all sides of an issue must be heard. For now, Ambassador, continue. Go on, Elaine. Tell us what you saw. All those people. And they had no weapons. They had no way of fighting back. But... but... But the accused slaughtered them all, did she not? Yes. I saw it all. I took refuge in Port Last. There was nowhere left for me to go. You are safe now, Elaine. And the accused cannot harm you here. What more proof is needed? We have a witness, a witness that saw the accused perform the deed. Perhaps we should move on to the sentence now? The accused's guilt is plain. Of course. Please. The trap has already closed. There is no squirming out of it now. You know I do. You brought her to port last. Yes, I know her well, as a matter of fact. She stopped in Ember during trade season. Not once, but many times. No. No, I did not know that. Reverend Judge, I fail to see where this line of questioning is going. Elaine, listen to me. Something's wrong. Whoever did what they did at Ember, it wasn't who you think it was. I would know. Enough! The accused has only one counsel, and only he shall speak to the witness. Oh, Ambassador, I freely forfeit the right to question the witness when Chandra here is speaking. I really have no choice. Elaine, we weren't even at Ember when it happened, or anywhere near there. Are you sure you saw us? I... I think I did. Or... well, someone who looked very much like the accused. What? Forget this. Clearly the witness is too distraught to give her testimony properly. So let's choose someone who's not affected by Ember at all. Someone the accused knows all too well. I call forth Chandra Jero. What? Come now, Chandra. Don't be afraid. We are in a court of law. You may speak freely here. About what? About these false accusations? No. I am interested only in your interactions with the accused. You travel with her. Do you not? I do. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever observed the accused causing, or near, any acts that compare to the destruction at Ember? I really don't think that... Answer the question. No. Not even your home? Well, yes. 
But that was different. There were... And wasn't your home attacked twice and is now burned to the ground? Well, yes, but that was after... Next time when I ask you a question, I want you to answer it, Chandra, without objecting or giving me exceptions. You are safe here, and you need not fear the accused anymore. Because, you see, what I am most concerned about, Chandra, is what you think. What you really think of the accused. We know something of her activities in Neverwinter already, as well as the lands around. So think carefully before you answer. Hope you've been treating her well. She's about to come clean. Is she someone who might do such a thing? No, she is a good woman who cares about others. To hear her slandered like this makes me angry at the... <sighs> injustice of it! Angry enough to attack? To kill those who stand against the accused? I see. By the gods, if you are accusing me of what happened at Ember... I make no such accusations. But trouble does follow the accused, oddly enough. Perhaps you are blinded. One can often be in shock after the destruction of one's home. Thank you for all your help, Chandra. I think this matter will soon be brought to a close. I hope you get what you deserve, Ambassador. My dear, all I want is justice. Almost. You see, there's only one more I wish to speak to, and that is you. Why, I call the accused as a witness, of course. My question is a simple one. Why did you kill the people of Ember? So you have not been to Ember? Not seen the dead at your feet? So you were in Ember? Why? That is Luskin lands, yet there is no record of an invite or permission to enter our land. Huh. It seems we may have hit upon yet another crime. A trespass resulting in murder of the worst kind. I believe that is why we are here, isn't it? Although you can answer that better than I. It seems slaughter was the only reason. An entire village wiped from the map, gone. And so you are saying that this may have been militarily motivated. The people of Ember slaughtered solely to test our defenses, our resolve. Why is it the innocent must suffer for the aggression of others? What? Preposterous. Luskin has not set foot in Neverwinter before. And if there was conflict with you, it was no doubt due to your aggression. Perfect. My word, I think I'm actually learning a thing or two. Enough! I have asked you to answer my question. Why did you kill the people of Ember? Let it be shown that the accused refused to answer directly, or at all. I have no more patience for this farce. No more questions, Reverend Judge. Very well, Ambassador. The accused may now present their witnesses. May I? I have a brief opening speech with some cutting barbs prepared, but if you'd rather be found innocent as quickly as possible... Thank you, Reverend Judge, Lord Nasher, and fine people of Neverwinter. These allegations are a farce, my lord. I mean to show you the innocence of this woman, a squire of Neverwinter, and the falsehood of the accusations against her. The evidence of the ambassador from Luskin is a transparent, ill-conceived ploy to destroy the life of one of Neverwinter's loyal servants. The accused has only been a squire for a short time, conveniently promoted after the massacre of the people of Ember. Perhaps as a reward? Ambassador, you've had your say. Now it is time for the accused to speak. And as for you, Sand, I would refrain from such accusations without first presenting proof. My lord, the difference is, in my statements can be found the truth. 
I was going to call Callum of the Neverwinter Nine, the commander you met in Old Owl Well after the victory there. His voice carries a great deal of weight. For our first witness, I summon Callum of Neverwinter Nine, fresh from his victory over the vicious orc tribes in Old Owl Well. Lord Callum, none can doubt your service and loyalty to Neverwinter, your successful defense of our sovereign lands. You have met the accused before, have you not? She was a great help to me in defeating the orc bands at Old Owl Well in earlier months. Were it not for her assistance, the well would now be held by the orcs. The soldiers of Neverwinter and the realm itself owe a deep debt of gratitude to her. And it is a travesty that these foul charges have been levied against her. Thank you, Lord Colum. We are ever grateful to hear the words of one of the nine. Lord Callum, I have heard you express that the charges in this court are a travesty and that they are unwarranted. That is true. I feel the charges are unfounded. Is it because they are given by Luskin? Luskin has much to gain by casting down heroes of Neverwinter. Do I trust that Luskin brings such charges in good faith? I do not. Nor do I trust your motives, Ambassador. There is a reason that low justice and high justice were divided by the Luskin-Neverwinter Treaty, and I do not believe that any Luskin court or advocate has justice on their mind. But you do know that the voice of the accused's counsel is from Luskin, do you not? From the ranks of the Hostower of the Arcane, before he fled? That banshee! No, I did not. I agree. This matter concerns Ember, and whether the accused, who has sacrificed for Neverwinter on many occasions, merits such accusations. The origin of such charges or slander on the counsel of the accused has no bearing on the crime itself. I misspoke, but your behavior here, Ambassador, only grants support to my words. If there's nothing else, I think we've all wasted enough time here. I thank Lord Callum for his time, Reverend Judge. My questions have been answered to my satisfaction. I see Naya, the herbalist we helped in port last. I was thinking about bringing her to the stand. She could be good for our defense. The accused calls Naya, resident of port last. Naya, you encountered the accused in port last, did you not? That's correct. I remember the accused well. And well met to you. <laughs> It is good to see your face again. Could you tell us what happened? I have been at Port Last for the past season to help fortify the town's defense. Though my duties occupied all of my time, I was concerned about the unburied bodies in Ember. I knew from a former acquaintance, a follower of Kelimvor, that after dying such violent deaths, it was possible they could arise as undead. But I could not see to them and could not convince anyone to help until the good squire came. The squire agreed to put the dead to eternal rest. To hide the evidence, perhaps? This is meaningless. I think you have taken my words out of context. But I forgive you. After all, it is your life at stake. Now, are you done attempting to hold off a verdict? Or are you ready, at last, to face justice? No, at least one more witness, I think, and we shall close the curtain on this stage. Unknown to all, there was another survivor of the Ember Massacre. A poor, frightened boy who had to hide in a well to prevent being slaughtered. How did he know to do such a thing? Why, Marcus has a gift. A gift of sight beyond sight. The gift of a seer. And he knew the murder would happen to end the true identity of the killer. Tell us what you saw, young Marcus. What you saw with your special gift. It was a huge man that killed the village. I don't know how you could confuse him with her. They don't look anything alike. Maybe he used a magic disguise. But disguises like that don't fool me. Ha! <laughs> what is this, a joke? You bring a child seer onto the stand, ask him a question, and then have him lie for you? Of course I do. If he has the power of a seer, then let us test it. Marcus, what do I hold in my left hand? Your left hand holds an iron ring. The ring of Garius. 
the master of the fifth tower. You hold it tightly, as if afraid it will fly from you. Every time you touch the ring, you see how angry he becomes when one fails him, and you fear his ambition. It is a ring that is more of a chain than a piece of jewelry. And even more so, the ring reminds you of... Enough! No more questions. It is a ring, nothing more. But the boy guessed correctly. A parlor trick, surely. But the rest is lies, of that be assured. No more questions, Reverend Judge. Then I shall call our next witness. Chandra, please come forward. Sand, no! All right, you've got a good point. Go on, Sand. Ask your questions. Chandra, you know the accused, have traveled with her, have you not? I have. And this crime of which she is accused? As one who knew the people of Ember, of Port Lust, do you really think her capable of such a crime? No, not at all. Look, don't get me wrong. Trouble seems to come at her heels. But it's how she deals with those troubles that makes me say no. She... Well, she keeps trying to make things right, even when things are at their worst. And it's really hard not to admire that and stick by it no matter what. I think that says it all, Chandra. Thank you. I have no more witnesses, Lord Nasher. The parties have spoken. Now all that remains is judgment to be passed. Lord Nasher. I expect Lord Nasher has already come to the correct decision. I certainly hope so. It's evident this was a conspiracy to frame a loyal squire of Neverwinter as a criminal of the worst sort. Silence, Sand. I have heard enough from you, and from you, Torio. And it is enough for me to reach a decision. The case before me was a difficult one. But it seems we now know the identity of Ember's attackers. Naval, I want the Ambassador, her retinue, and any remaining members of the Arcane Brotherhood of Luskan outside the city gates by nightfall. What? This is no verdict to think the Brotherhood truly responsible. You brought this case before me. Now you debate my verdict? I would be careful of where you point a sword when you draw it, Ambassador. And remind your masters and Luskan of that as well. I think we've wasted enough time on this. Justice has been done, and... I claim the right of trial by combat. Ambassador, I am tired of your games, and I will indulge you no longer. In a matter of such importance, you would deny me my sacred right of appeal? Can Lord Nasher do that, Reverend Judge? Can he put himself above our god tier in this matter? He cannot. The Ambassador from Luskin is entitled to an appeal as she describes. Gods, I was hoping she didn't know about it. And who will fight for you, Torio? This is no battle with words, though I would like to see you try to match your wit against the blade of a true soldier of Neverwinter. Indeed, you are correct, Sir Naval. Luskin is not the aggressor here, and I only wish to see justice done. But I cannot defend myself and seek justice in this matter. Is there not one who will champion the people of Ember? I will. I have listened to these lies, and will answer them with my blade, in Luskin's name. A champion has been declared. Both the defender and the accused are required by law to report to the Temple of Justice in Neverwinter, to undergo the rite of tear, to cleanse themselves in a night of prayer and vigilance. The following morning, the champions shall meet in combat so that justice may be decided. So be it. After the rite is observed, the trial shall be held in the morning upon the tourney grounds. Arm yourself and be ready, squire, or choose a champion to fight for you. Because, by the gods, we have not come all this way for justice to be denied in this final hour. So, it seems this will be decided with blood. If that is what it takes to win the day, then that is what we must do. When you are prepared, go to the Hall of Justice and speak with Prior Ham to start the Rite of Tear. Yes. I concur.
something you want? Everyone, follow me! You follow me, okay? <laughs> <laughs>